Welcome to Excel 2013 Statistical Analysis video number 35. And if you want to download this workbook and follow along, and this is the second workbook for Chapter 5, click on the link below the video. Hey, we got to talk about the hypergeometric distribution. Now, we already saw the hypergeom.dist function last chapter when we talked about cards and pulling cards and the sample space has changed. Events are not independent. But here, let's talk about it here in this chapter, because we can use the function and use the 0 for probability mass, which is the probability or the height of the column. And we can use 1 for cumulative. Hey, the hypergeometric distribution is similar to the binomial distribution, except the trials are not independent. Remember when we pull a queen and we try to get a second queen, well, the sample space has changed. Instead of 52 cards, there's 51. And the probability of success changes from trial to trial. We talked all about conditional probability last chapter. Here's the function we're going to use. And this list will translate x. That's the number of successes. That's going to show up in our function as sample successes. Number of trials, n. That's going to be number sample. So in our card pulling example, if we wanted two queens and three tries, sample success would be two. Number in the sample would be three. Number successes in the population, that's population s for successes. Hey, well, if there was four queens in the deck, that's that number. Population size, number pop. That's going to be all of the cards, so 52. And then cumulative, we used 0 last time. We can use 1 this time. Now, here's our example now. Two face cards in five tries. Now, last chapter, we actually calculated two queens in three tries. And we listed all the sample points, then did our multiplying and adding rule, right? Well, this one, that's a huge sample space. I used the combine function to calculate 10. And oh, my heavens, there's 10 of them. I had to do all these calculations. That made my head hurt trying to do all that. Well, guess what? The hypergeom function dot dis function will help us out. But before we do that, alt equals, and let's just add all these up. Oh my heavens, I wouldn't like to calculate it that way. Enter. So that's a probability of pulling two face cards and five tries. Now, the hypergeom dot dis function equals hypg tab. And our sample successes, we're trying to pull two face cards. Those are our successes. Comma, number in the sample, that's how many trials or steps or cards we're pulling. Five, comma, population successes. There are 12 total face cards, not including aces. Comma, number pop. That's all the cards in the decks. Comma and cumulative, we're using probability mass. So 0, close parentheses, and Control Enter. That is much easier. Now let's go over to the sheet H2, because what's nice about this is now we can list all of our x's for this particular experiment. Remember, we're pulling five cards. What's the probability we get zero face cards? One, two, three, four, and five equals HYPG tab. Our sample successes, there's our random variable x for this experiment, comma, number in the sample. I got a five up here, F4, comma, population successes, there are 12. F4, comma, and finally, the number pop, F4, comma, and we want 0 for the actual probability or height of the column. And I could copy it down. Alt equals and Enter. So there's our 1. Now let's try probability of x less than or equal to 2. That means we want the probability of pulling uh, two face cards, one face card or a 0, all adding them all up. So Alt equals 0, 1, and 2. Ah, but we have the 1 in our arsenal when we have our distribution function. So hypergeometric distribution. The number of successes we want to pull to, comma, 
within five, that's our sample. Population successes, there's 12 face cards, comma, number in the population, 52, comma, and one. Remember, the one always goes from the smallest up to whatever x we put in. So close parentheses and Enter. There you go. Now let's look at another example, example three. During the financial crisis of 2008, of the 10 biggest banks, only three increased lending after they were given TARP funds of about $2 billion. Now remember, the TARP funds of $2 billion were given to the banks in hopes that they would lend money to people who had good ideas that could stimulate the economy. But that just didn't happen. So here's our experiment. If you took a random sample of four of the 10 biggest banks at that time, what is the probability that one of them would increase lending? All three. Now the trick is here is we need to know the population size. That's all the big banks. Successes in the population, there was three that actually increased lending. Sample size is four. And a success is did you lend? So we're going to define our x, our random variable, as number that did lend in the sample. So let's go ahead and use our equals hypergeometric distribution. Our sample successes, 1, comma, the number in the sample, we're pulling 4. Oh, we're not pulling cards. We're going out and randomly selecting, which is like pulling F4, comma. Population successes, there were three banks that increased lending, F4, comma, and number population, that's the population size, F4, comma, zero, close parentheses. Control Enter. Wow, so if the probability of going out and selecting four banks and finding one of those four increased lending was 50%. If I copy this down, the chance that three of the four was three and a third percent. All right, so in this video, we talked about the hypergeometric distribution function. This is for when the sample space is changing. Oh, by the way, if you do this crazy one over here, right? We did that last chapter, but we're not going to do that anymore because we want to go ahead and use the hypergeometric distribution function. We saw how to use a 1, which we didn't do last chapter. We saw how to. Add them all up, build the distribution. All right, so this is the last video for chapter five. Next chapter, we get to talk about continuous random variables. And we'll get to start our conversation about the bell-shaped distribution. All right, we'll see you next video.